Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to take a look at some special types of thermodynamically favored processes in Unit 9, Section 4, as well as Section 5, where we're going to learn about how equilibrium relates to thermodynamics. Well, here in Section 4, we're going to look at some reactions that take place so slowly that we can't even measure how uh, fast they're going. For example, in fact, this is one of my favorite examples of this, is a car that's just rusting away. So here we have a car that's been sitting in this desert for who knows how long, and it's slowly rusting away. Now we know that this is a thermodynamically favored process, and we know that because it's happening. That car is obviously rusting. There is no question that the reaction is taking place. But it's happening so slowly that we can't really measure the rate. In fact, it might be happening over the course of years or even decades in this case. Reactions like that are said to be under kinetic control. Kinetic control. And there are lots of reactions that are like that. They uh, are happening, obviously. They're happening very, very slowly. We can actually look at the uh, delta H values and the delta S values for the reaction, and we can see that Yes, this is a thermodynamically favored process, so it should be taking place, and we can probably see that it is, just very slowly. Now, what's the reason for a reaction being like this? Well, most of the time, it's because a reaction has a very high activation energy. Now, as you might remember from Unit 5, a very high activation energy means that very few of those molecules that are trying to react are going to have the threshold uh, energy in order to be able to produce an effective uh, collision. So because of that, there's a very high activation energy, it's going to be a very slow process. And in this case, it may take decades for this reaction to take place. Now, just so we know, this reaction has not stopped. It, it continues to, to progress, even though it is progressing very slowly. As a result, it is not at equilibrium. So just be aware that there are some reactions that are like this. We call those reactions that are under kinetic control. Now, as we move on to section five, we're going to talk about how we can relate equilibrium, which we learned about in unit seven, to thermodynamics. Now, we can actually use an equilibrium constant to tell whether or not a reaction is going to be thermodynamically favored at a certain temperature. This is the equation that we use to make that calculation. Delta G equals negative RT times the natural log of K. Now in this equation, the, that delta G is the delta G that we've used in the last couple of videos, the change in Gibbs free energy. And once again, just as a reminder, if delta G is a negative value, it's a thermodynamically favored process. If it's positive, it is not. Now R is the universal gas constant. Since we're using units of joules per mole per Kelvin, the, the numerical value for this is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. T, of course, represents the temperature at which we're working in Kelvins. Just remember, if it's in Celsius, you have to, to convert it, as you see here. And then LNK, that represents the natural log of the equilibrium constant. On your calculator, you have an LN button, which will help you to do this. So let's try an example. Here we have a chemical reaction that we've worked with many times in this course, the production of ammonia. And we have the equilibrium constant is 0.18 at 500 degrees Celsius. And the question says, calculate the value of delta G for this reaction at 500 degrees Celsius. Well, we're going to have to use that equation. Delta G equals negative RT, natural log of K. So we're solving for delta G. The R is that universal gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now the temperature, it's given to us as 500 degrees Celsius. So in Kelvins, that's 773 Kelvins. And then we have to take natural log of this equilibrium constant. The natural log of 0.18, according to my calculator, is about negative 1.715. So now I'm going to multiply these values by each other. 
and I find that the delta G equals about positive 11,000 joules per mole. Now, we normally express these thermodynamic values in kilojoules, don't we? So we just move that decimal point over a few places and we have positive 11 kilojoules per mole. So that's our answer for this one. Part B says, is this reaction thermodynamically favored at 500 degrees Celsius? And explain your answer. Well, all we have to do is look at the sign of delta G, and since it is a positive value, we'd have to say that no, this is not thermodynamically favored since that delta G is positive. Now, to sum up, when we think about how this equation works, if we look at that, that, that equation, we can see that numerically, if delta G ends up being a positive value, that means that the equilibrium constant must be a very small number. That's just how that works numerically. Now, in terms of the chemistry here, what that means is if the reaction is not thermodynamically favored, that's why that delta G is positive, right? That means we're gonna have very little products. And that makes sense because if it's not thermodynamically favored, you wouldn't expect for that reaction to to be very successful. So you aren't gonna have a whole lot of product. Now, the opposite would also have to be true. If delta G is a negative number, whenever you do the calculation, that means that K must be a very large number. And that's just a numerical expression, a numerical way of talking about this. What that means for our chemistry here is that if delta G is negative, then we're talking about a thermodynamically favored process, aren't we? So when a process is thermodynamically favored, we're gonna have large amounts of product, large value for K, that's what that means, a lot of product is formed. And that makes sense, because if a reaction is thermodynamically favored, you would expect that reaction to be quite successful. You'd have a lot of product. Now, what if you have a delta G value that is close to zero. Now, probably won't be zero, but it might be close to it. Well, if that's the case, then our equilibrium constant must be fairly close to one. And as we learned in the equilibrium unit, that means that you'll have approximately equal amounts of products and reactants. I hope this video has helped you to learn about the concepts of kinetic control and how to use this equation, delta G equals negative RT natural log of K. If you learned something, go ahead and smash that like button. My name is Jeremy Krug. In our next video, we're gonna wrap up this concept of the second law of thermodynamics, and then we'll move on to electrochemistry. Hope to see you then.